All right, hope everybody's doing well. I think I made a mistake buying this Grand Seiko. Let me tell you why. I think by now the cat is out of the bag. I am blessed to own a Rolex Explorer 1, reference number 114270. However, I bought the Grand Seiko before this Rolex and well, in terms of finishing, the Rolex doesn't come close, but I love it regardless. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I wasn't as impressed by the King because I had already met the Emperor. This SBGM221 was first brought up to my attention by my friend Brandon Minancio. By the way, congrats on officially becoming part of the Hodinkee team. Well deserved, Brandon. Well deserved. I have to be honest, the vintage aesthetic of this watch put me off for a long time. And it's not a watch I have ever considered owning. Furthermore, I actually got hands-on with this model in a Grand Seiko AD. And again, for whatever reason, I just didn't connect with it. Months went by, and the more images and videos I saw of it, I started to have feelings. After some sleepless nights and advice from my watch buddies, I ordered it, and when it arrived, I had this indescribable feeling that only certain timepieces give you. This watch is special, and it's one of the most attainable Grand Seikos on the market. You can currently get one for less than $5,000. The specs and price point make this watch highly collectible. There's Serato polishing throughout the entire case. If you have yet to see this finishing in person, do yourself a favor and put it on your bucket list. The clarity of the finishing is close to looking in the mirror. Videographing this watch without having your reflection is, well, close to impossible. Two major downfalls, however, are the smudges that find themselves quite easily in like affordable housing, and scratches will be inevitable. The entire case is constructed of stainless steel. It measures in at 39.5 millimeters. It's 46.9 millimeters from lug to lug. We find a case thickness of 13.7 millimeters and a lug width of 19 millimeters. The case has drilled lugs. The watch has a water resistance of 30 meters. Personally, I won't get this watch anywhere near water. But hey, that's just me. The watch comes fitted with a box-shaped sapphire crystal, and boy, it's thick, and the distortions it creates are similar to acrylic. It really ties in well with the Vintage 5. The dial on this watch is hard to describe. In certain lights, it looks ivory, and in certain lights, it looks very close to white. Whatever color you want to call it, it's handsome. The attention to detail really shines through, no pun intended. The reflective surfaces on the indices and hands are intense, and even when the slightest speck of light hits it, it glistens like Edward in that girly film that your girlfriend not wife made you watch, and it's unlike any other watch I've ever had a chance to review. Did you see that blue GMT hand? Yeah, I know, it's incredible. The symmetry on the dial is flawless. We find a very useful date window on the right hand side that's framed beautifully. And inside the indices we find 24 hour numerals that keep track of the second time zone, along with the GS logo and the words automatic and GMT. On the back side of the watch we find an exhibition sapphire crystal that has a Grand Seiko Lion printed on it. Unlike earlier GS models, though, this one is ghosted out. I'm glad they listen to their consumers. The movement power in this watch is the Caliber 9S66, automatic movement that can be hacked and hand wound. It features 35 joules and has an accuracy of plus 5 minus 3 seconds per day and a power reserve of 72 hours. The movement is striking to look at and is very nicely decorated. This watch is not a dress watch. And it's not a sports watch. It lacks loom, yet it has a GMT function. The water resistance sucks, but it's a strap monster. It's the type of watch you buy because you like the sporty look, yet refuse to partake in actual sports or outdoor activities. Kind of like me. And well, you have a more refined taste. Kind of like me. When you pull the push and pull sign crown to the first position, the main hour hand your local time rotates independently of the GMT and minute hands. 
This allows you to adjust the time to your new local time without stopping or hacking the time. This also is how you adjust the date. However, that's one negative I have, changing that date, as it requires the hour hand to be rotated around 24 hours. As you can imagine, when you don't constantly wear the watch, it takes a long time to set the correct date. On the second position, the hacking capability sets into play. The movement stops and allows all hands of the watch to be adjusted. This is how the GMT function works. You adjust the GMT hand to your home time. When you arrive to your destination, you adjust the main hour hand to your local time. Now you can know what your local time is and the beautiful blue GMT hand will reference your home time. How cool is that? The watch comes with a crocodile leather strap that features a signed Grand Seiko deploying buckle. The deploying buckle has also been treated with that beautiful Serato polish. Fun fact, the buckle can be removed and used in a different strap. The strap, in my humble opinion, is very dressy, so I removed it immediately. This Grand Seiko looks amazing on a variety of straps, but one of the biggest downfalls, aside from setting the date and the water resistance, is the 19 millimeter leg width. There's a lot of companies out there that sell great straps, but their 19 millimeter strap selection, well, is limited as opposed to the most popular sizes. Nonetheless, in the description of the video, I linked a few companies that I personally recommend. So on my six and seven eighth inch wrist, I think the watch wears good. A little on the thick side, but good. It's very comfortable to wear. And also it definitely feels like you're wearing a watch on your wrist as the watch weighs in 88 grams, as opposed to other titanium offerings I've had the pleasure of experiencing from Grand Seiko that feel, well, not that substantial. Doesn't mean they're bad. I just like that heft. In 1962, legendary Seiko designer, Taro Tanaka developed a series of rules dubbed the Grammar of Design, and his holistic approach to what watches should look like would inform Grand Seiko's design language for years to come. So here are some of those designs. Uh, one would be the flat surfaces and angles to best reflect the light. Two, flat faceted and polished bezel. Three, mirror finishing, Serato polishing of all case and dial components. Number four, unique case shapes. These specific elements are directed towards the principle of keeping the watch's geometry clean, crisp, and legible, and that they do unlike any other watch brand on the market. So should you buy this model? Well, no, I think you should buy the model that speaks to you. I think you shouldn't buy any product based on influence. So the better question is, should you buy a Grand Seiko? And my answer to you is definitely yes. You can thank me later. I hope you enjoyed the video. And your support not only means the world to me, but it motivates me to keep producing quality free entertainment. Thank you for your time. Take care and stay humble.